So, um, Jerry, Dave said, licking his crusty lips as he prepared to devour the sandwich I'd bought him. What's up, buddy? I blubbered, bits of pastrami, and rye tumbling to my feet. I have a question for you. Look, I know this is only like our eighth time meeting, but he trailed off, staring into the distance at nothing in particular. I waited expectantly for him to continue. A moment later, he glanced down to the tuna sub clutched in his dirty fingers, and a warm grin inched across his face. With a tiny nod, he continued, This is coming way out of left field, but I'm getting married soon, he said, proudly showcasing a glimmering gold wedding band. Dave, that's awesome. Congratulations, man. Who's the lucky lady? His cheeks flushed with color, and he began twirling his greasy gray locks like a giddy schoolgirl. Her name is Lucy. You'll get to meet her soon enough. I'll be honored. I'm glad you found yourself a good girl. I'm happy for you, I said, clasping Dave on the shoulder. I recoiled a bit too quickly at the gruff texture of his unwashed coat. Thanks, Jerry. That means a lot. So, what I've been meaning to ask you is, he mumbled, wringing his hands and staring holes into his feet. Will you be my best man? My jaw dropped to the floor as a wet glob of meat slapped the concrete. Sorry for springing this on you, but honestly, you're one of the only people who's shown me kindness. Living on the streets, everyone looks at you like you're garbage, like the crap stain mucking up their fancy little porcelain toilet. But not you, Jerry. You're one of the most genuine people I've ever met. I know it's a lot to ask for, but it would mean the world to me. He gazed into my eyes, tears threatening to spill down his grungy cheeks. I fumbled for any excuse I could think of. I'm going on a business trip that day. My elderly mother is ill. I have my pet Rock's funeral to go to. Anything. The words that spilled from my mouth sent my head into a frenzy. I'll do it. Why did I have to say that? Dave gingerly set his sub down on the bench before throwing his grimy arms around me. I struggled to choke back the vomit creeping up my throat as his putrid stench assaulted my nostrils. Thank you so much, Jerry. I knew I could count on you. Don't mention it, I wheezed gulping lungfuls of brisk New York air like my life depended on it. I'll meet up with you sometime this week to give you the details. I know where to find you, he said, stuffing the remainder of the sandwich into a tattered pocket. Great, I'll mark my calendar. He turned to leave as my bus screeched to a halt before me. I stood to get on, a shiver rippling down my spine. It felt as if dozens of bed bugs were crawling throughout my coat. I made a mental note to burn it once I got home. As I boarded, I claimed my seat by the window. Dave stood on the pavement below. He mouthed a silent thank you as we lurched forward. No, babe, I'm not saying I don't like the guy. What I mean is, we've met literally four times, and now he's asking me to be the freaking best man in his wedding. Don't you think that's a little strange? Grace pursed her lips as she set a steaming plate of meatloaf and veggies before me. I'll admit, it's kinda weird, but I think it's sweet too. Give the guy a chance. He drew the short end of the stick in life, make his day, and move on. So, when's the bachelor party? She said, winking at me as she slid into her chair. Beats me. The man didn't give me any details. All he said was I know where to find you, whatever that means. You see him every once in a while at the bus stop, right? I'm sure he'll meet you there when he's ready. You should ask him if you can have a plus one. Grace giggled, grinning ear to ear. I definitely will. I don't want to go through this stuff alone. I didn't see Dave for the rest of the week. Maybe he'd forgotten about me and asked someone else. I mean, he had to have some friends, right? As the days dredged on, I began to let my guard down. I gradually stopped glancing behind me everywhere I went. My eyes quit darting around wildly at the bus stop. The crowded streets felt more welcoming. Until the next Monday, I was minding my own business just one of a plethora of downtrodden cubicle monkeys destined for yet another bland, monotonous day. I downed my fourth cup of coffee, rising to retrieve a fifth, when I heard the commotion. Ashley, the pretty blonde receptionist that all the company's bachelors swooned over, was marching furiously behind a disheveled man tracking dirt through our previously unsullied carpet. She screamed at him, tugging at his ratty clothes to no avail. My heart plummeted into my gut when I saw him. I was Dave. Sir, sir, for the fifteenth time, you can't be in here. This is private property. Yeah, yeah. Just give me a couple minutes. There's someone I came to see. I don't care who you came to see. You need to leave before I call the cops. Ashley's face was red as a face engine. I could practically see the steam wafting from her ears. 
I tried to duck out of view before Dave saw me. I plopped into my seat, praying the pair wouldn't find me. Of course, I wouldn't be so lucky. Dave cupped his grubby hands to his mouth and screamed into the sea of cubes. I'm looking for Jerry Marsetti. Does anyone know where Jerry Marsetti sits? At that moment, I wanted nothing more than to coil into a ball and die. My head began to spin and I felt queasy. How the hell did Dave figure out where I worked? I started to lay my head down on my desk. When out of my periphery, I noticed Jared the temp worker discreetly pointing in my direction. I immediately snapped my head toward him and shot him a death glare. His face drained of color and he reclaimed his seat. I could only pray that Dave hadn't seen. Hey, sure, there you are, buddy. Welp, that was pointless. Oh, hey Dave, what brings you to the office? I laughed nervously, my eyes pleading with Ashley to help me. She crossed her arms and turned her head, just passing through. And I thought now would be as good a time as any to give you this, he smirked, handing me a crumpled piece of notebook paper with scratchy, barely legible writing scrawled on it haphazardly in pencil. Oh, thanks. Don't mention it, pal. I can't tell you how delighted it makes me to have you as my best man. You're a true friend. Ashley's face twisted in confusion. I wanted to throw up. Great, now everyone and their second cousin knew about the wedding. Way to keep a secret, Dave. Yeah, looking forward to it, I muttered, mentally shooting daggers at Dave's dirt-smeared forehead. But anyway, I won't hold you up any longer. I'm sure you have lots of planning to do. I'll walk you out, I insisted, scrambling to my feet. Ashley raised an eyebrow at me. Are you two done here? I need him out now, she see. I see blue eyes boring into mine. Yeah, sorry Ash. Won't happen again, will it, Dave? Nope, sorry for the disturbance, ma'am, he said, trundling out the front door, waving as he went. See you soon, Jerry. I pursed my lips and nodded as the glass door clinked shut. Pins and needles prickled my back as dozens of curious onlookers leered at me while I returned to my desk. God, why did he have to choose me? He showed up to my work for heaven's sake. Grace, what am I supposed to do? He literally screamed my name out in front of everyone. I'm lucky that Ted is on a business trip this week. Who knows how he'd react? My girlfriend sighed, rubbing the back on her neck. Yeah, that's really strange, babe. It's obvious that he's never heard of manners. Did you look over the note he left you? No, I've been too disgusted by the whole situation to even look at the thing. You can read it if you want, I said, sliding the paper across the table to her. All right, you're sure you don't mind me reading this? She asked, eyeing me inquisitively. I don't care, just get it over with, if you insist. Well, that's odd. I think you should take a look at this yourself, Grace said, handing the note back to me. I scanned Dave's chicken scratch, struggling to comprehend his awful writing. Meet me behind Brownsville First Baptist Church at 4.30 p.m. this Sunday. Come alone. My brows furrowed in confusion. I flipped the page, eyeballing it up and down, trying to find any details I may have missed. After a couple strenuous minutes of searching, I gave up. That's really weird. He didn't tell me what to wear, and the note mentions nothing about a reception or a recital and I can't even bring a plus one. What kind of wedding is this? Grace shrugged. No clue. Han, I guess you're just going to have to find out for yourself. I sighed heavily, realizing that she was right. My nerves ran wild. As the day of the wedding quickly approached, why did all of this have to be so shady? Why couldn't Dave just have a normal wedding like any other halfway functioning member of society? The whole thing left a bad taste in my mouth. Before I knew it, the day had finally arrived. I sported a sleek blue suit complete with a matching blazer and bow tie. I gave myself the once over in my bathroom mirror as I prepared to leave, patting myself on the back for cleaning up so nicely. You look very handsome, baby. Be careful and have fun. I'll be waiting for you when you get back, Grace said, planting a kiss on my cheek and firing a wink at me as I walked out the door. My heart fluttered. It always did around her. I'll try my best. I love you, I said as my cheeks blossomed with color. I love you too, babe. I trundled along the road in my worn Chevy Tahoe at a snail's pace, headed to the venue armed with nothing but my pride and $50 as a gift. Dave would probably appreciate that more than some cheap home decoration, right? Of course he would. He didn't have a home. I rolled to a stop in the near empty parking lot with three minutes to spare. I slipped out of the vehicle and hurriedly tromped to the back of the building, 
heart pounding against my chest like a sledgehammer. I wiped a bead of sweat from my brow as I rounded the corner, and there he was, in all his ragged glory. Dave. He looked great. Buddy. He proudly wore a half-washed button down with yellowing sweat stains visible in the pits and neck areas along with frayed black trousers, brown wrinkled dress shoes, a shabby black belt, a stained green tie, and mismatched socks. Thanks, man. I'm a nervous wreck. What if she gets cold feet? I mean, I can barely afford to feed myself most days. What if she realizes what a bum I am and backs out? Don't worry about that. You're a great guy. She wouldn't be marrying you if she didn't believe that. And this should help a little with your food problem, I said, sliding a crisp $50 bill into his uncharacteristically clean hand. He looked at the money then back to me, grinning like a child on Christmas morning. Thanks, Jerry. I knew I made the right choice picking you. Now let's hurry up and get in there. I have a girlfriend to marry. We shuffled in through the back door. Trepidation bubbled in my gut as we made our way through a small storage room and into the chapel. Dave paused, taking a deep breath as he prepared himself for the biggest moment of his life. I almost forgot. Here's the rings. Thank you again for doing this. You're the best. I dropped them into my shirt pocket and nodded proudly as we entered the church. We found ourselves next to a small stage. Dozens of empty pews lined the worship hall like soldiers at attention. Rays of light beamed through the stained glass windows, casting beautiful shades of an amalgamation of colors across every surface. Standing before the podium, awaiting her fiancé's arrival, was Lucy. Stunning would be an understatement. The luminous blonde curls bounced atop her shoulders, bobbing up and down with the slightest movement. Ocean blue eyes shimmered as they watched us make our way toward them. Lucy smiled at Dave, showcasing rows of flawless white teeth. Her wedding dress fit perfectly, hugging her petite frame in all the right places. I was gobsmacked. How did Dave manage to pull this goddess? We tentatively approached as an impatient pastor hurried us along. He began reading from a paper in a monotone voice as the bride and groom stared lovingly into each other's eyes. I zone out, still struggling to comprehend the enigma that was Dave's life. He truly was a wonder. I was snapped from my trance by a nudge to the arm. Jerry, the rings, Dave whispered, trying to discreetly get my attention. Right, sorry, I mumbled as I handed him the diamond encrusted silver bands. He turned back to his soon to be wife and gently scooped her hands into his. Do you? Um, what's your name again? The pastor murmured into Dave's ear. David Bowman, idiot. The pastor glared at him before continuing. Do you, David Bowman, take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold? From this day forward, until death do you part. I do, and do you, Lucille Johnston, take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold. From this day forward, until death do you part. I do, and do the both of you take this man to be your unlawful prisoner, to beat, and to torture, to maim, and to torment, until death knocks down his door. We do. Suddenly, the trio face me, each producing a dagger from somewhere on their person. They glowered at me menacingly, slowly stepping toward me like wolves stalking a rabbit. I backed away, heart threatening to burst from my chest. I slipped off the stage, toppling to the cold unforgiving floor. My brain scrambled for something, anything, to help me escape my predicament. The three were quickly closing the distance. Guys, come on, I'll help you. We can. Don't try to smooth talk your way out of this, Jerry. I've been waiting for this day for a long time, Dave said, hungrily licking his lips. He reached down and pulled me to my feet, knife at my back. Well, my beautiful bride, ladies first. With pleasure, Lucy snarled, hovering her blade inches from my neck. I squeezed my eyes shut, readying myself for the searing pain that would surely come, but it never did. Stop right there. You take your hands off my boyfriend right now or I won't hesitate to blow your brains out, you ugly wench. I opened my eyes to see Grace pointing my Rock Island bolt action rifle at Lucy's forehead. She released me, cautiously returning to her cohorts with her hands raised above her head. I scurried across the room to where my girlfriend stood, rifle firm in her grip. I'd never been so thankful to see her in my life. Here's what's going to happen next. We're going to leave. And if I ever catch you anywhere near my baby again, I will ruthlessly hunt you down. And I won't hesitate to pull the trigger on every one of you slimy pieces of trash. Got it. The guilty party timidly nodded as Grace rushed me out the door. 
we booked it to our cars and flew home. Once I got there, I threw my arms around my girlfriend and held her for a long time. Tears flowed down both our faces as the weight of our experience came toppling down on us. When we finally managed to compose ourselves, we called the cops and they took our statements. A quick sweep of the chapel revealed a basement filled to the brim with an assortment of various medieval torture devices, head crushers, lead sprinklers, giant crosses, and nails, you name it. I don't know what Dave had planned for me, but it wasn't good. Once the police were satisfied that we had told them the full story, I turned to Grace. I had a mental itch that I couldn't quite scratch. Hey babe, I have a question. We've only been getting grilled for a couple hours, but I guess I have one more in me. She giggled sarcastically. How did you know I was in danger? I had a gut feeling. The whole thing fell off. Why would he need you to come alone? I guess I just really wanted to be your plus one. She smirked. I couldn't help but chuckle. Well, I'm glad you did, I said, giving her a peck on the cheek. That was six months ago. I proposed to Grace at the first opportunity to present itself. She's everything I could have asked for and then some. Our own wedding is set for nine months from now. I must be the luckiest man alive. I've tried my best to move on from the events of that evening and focus on the present, but I still have trouble falling asleep at night. Please be vigilant and be wary of any random homeless people that mention a wedding because Dave is still out there and he needs a new best man.